Game of Thrones fans, we're back with House of the Dragon Season 2, Episode 1, and this is of course going to be my spoiler reaction review. I watched this as a casual. I'm not the biggest Game of Thrones fan. Like, of course I watched the original show. I loved it. When it comes down to the novel, the names, all that stuff becomes a little bit far out there for me, but I'm still excited to talk about this series and give you guys my reaction because I absolutely loved season one and the fact that we have now the premiere here and they already murdered a young boy in the first episode well holy shit are we back for some brutality definitely leave your thoughts down below hit that like subscribe button and understand if i mess up some things it's okay but i definitely want to hear your guys thoughts down below in the comment section and overall i found episode one of season two to be a pretty great start to house of the dragon very much bringing us back in it's been quite a while since the first season and what we really get here is kind of a nice little reintroduction to some of the characters who's who what's the situation where are we and where do we come off of from the ending of the last season where of course our queen Renera, or depending on what side you are and definitely leave your thoughts down below on which side you are your team green team black i am team black all the way Renera, here we come but you know, she is mourning. Her son is dead from Aemon. And, you know, this is very much the episode, A Son for a Son. That is what we're going for. And while this episode may be slow for some, it's kind of like that calm before the storm. It's that resettling and setup for everything that needs to go on. And as we look at like a chessboard and as we see all of our main players kind of planning their strategic avenues to what they need to do that is kind of where this episode is. Who are the main players? Where are they going? And what are they doing? And from the very first scene in this where we see the wall and we see a Stark talking, all of those just kind of instantly brought back memories of the original Game of Thrones. But adding on top of that, it adds into, okay, now we're expanding. We obviously have heard some house names here and there in the first season, but... The fact that we're going all the way to the wall, the fact that we're bringing all the way and going to the Starks and bringing that family into what may, some may seem a petty civil war to some, wars like this, it's usually either territory, insecurities, or pettiness that kind of bring this about. And as we see, as while this war is starting from one small little thing between two best friends, it has now grown into a family and civil war affair. And that and that's like one of the things for me personally that just is so intrigued by every single one of the avenues of what the House of the Dragons is. And as we continue throughout this episode, and again, the reintroduction, we get a little bit of Damon, who is just great. Matt Smith is so freaking phenomenal as this character. And what really builds up for me is like how he has that small little conversation with Renee's. The princess, which I might be mispronouncing that. I love her. I think she's an awesome character in here. And, you know, she comes back from her dragon and Damon and her are having this conversation. She says, the queen is mourning. And, you know, I think that kind of clicked for Damon what she's been going through and that he just has to be patient. He's always so gung-ho on trying to do things and trying to fix things. And, you know, he's not really happy with what the princess or the queen is necessarily doing here. But she understands fully what she's doing. And it is now their job to hold the fort until she is ready. Which then we pop over to Renera, and we see that she herself is very much wanting to find where her son is. And she finds the proof. And instantly once she comes back, it is all gung-ho. That one-shot take, and I really like how we have two one-shot takes here. We have one of her walking back in through the table, seeing her, her freaking relative, it still baffles me that they're together, but seeing Damon and seeing all of her companions and everything and her going right around and then her saying, I want Aemon, bring me Aemon Targaryen. Nothing against anything else about the plan, nothing about the barricade, nothing about that. All, everything was on that centered focus and then her leaving and that being the end of what we see from her for this episode. And from there, Damon goes in structurally heads to king's landing which it's so interesting to me because like you go back and watch the first few seasons or like the first five six seasons of game of thrones and like 
how long it took someone to get somewhere and now like even in house of dragons they have this like teleportation where they're just getting there i always find that funny the last few seasons of game of thrones did that but we go to this avenue and damon pays some people go kill Eamon. and i love I, I i love this the fact that he told them the hair color and they need an eye patch and these guys still couldn't get it right and we'll get to that at the very end of this episode but talking about the parallel of the one shot take seeing the princess also have that one shot take with the other child running away and then running in to of course Alicent Hightower I thought was fantastic I knew if I didn't mention it here I'd probably forget but the fact that we have two different teams and two different players playing in this green and black and when we go and look over on team green and the high towers and seeing how they're going they're struggling you know it seeing the life of what is going on in this castle and again, opening up with Alicent and that asshole knight. I cannot remember his name off the top of my head, but he absolutely pisses me off. But they're still sleeping around. Her son, Aegon, is taking over the king's castle and really much not taking it completely serious. And you can tell that like a lot of them are pissed at Aemon for the situation that they are now in and why King's Landing is struggling because of the barricade and all the dragons around. It's like, they can't do this or they might bring the dragons here. And if we do this, we might screw ourselves over and... You know, to see uh, Corlius, the sea snake, kind of back in action, I really like that too. I didn't get to mention that as we were talking about Team Black. But now seeing where Allison Hightower and everyone's at, you see her father still sniveling and still kind of controlling to some degree. And I really like that sequence where you see Aegon sitting in the chair and, you know, people coming in and you can see the immaturity of him and how... The father has to kind of snap this in and be like, you can't just give all the livestock back, guy. If you do, like, other people will just come here. So he doesn't give it back, fares him off. And they kept going through this. And then that conversation of like, well, yeah, that's how he used to be in the past. It's all these avenues and all these little willingly things that make me curious to see which character dynamics and how characters really flourish and come to be. But while this episode like I mentioned from the start, was a lot of talking and a lot of directional and reminders of who these characters are and really much situating where everything's going to be. The insightful thing at the very end is her saying, they killed the boy, which would have been Aegon's heir. And that, ending the episode on that moment in particular, shows a lot of different things. It shows how broken First off, Allison Hightower is that like, oh yeah, let me just fuck this guy, you know. I know it's the middle of the night, but don't have my door locked, don't have anything like that. And for the princess to run right in and, you know, for that to end right there and to end on a son for a son, specifically on how the last episode ended from the final or the first season, all these things, all these insightful things. If that was the start of the war, this might be even furthering that flame that was kind of pattering right there but now it's just blown wide open a whole new avenue of doors and i think overall this is again one of those episodes that i loved and it's another one that just has me intrigued i can't wait for episode two and also like one more thing i really liked is the parallels with the rats how they mentioned the rats throughout like a lot of the episodes and for me i wonder how that's going to tie in because there's a metaphor as well for what this culture would have seen other human beings as rats as well. Like, does that tie into anything like there? Does that kind of piece together anything? I don't know. Now I'm just rambling. But again, everyone's performance is absolutely phenomenal in House of the Dragon episode, uh, episode one, season two. Love it. Love seeing where everyone's at. And I can't wait to see where more of these characters end up being. Again, it was great to see everyone. We even got to see the dude who's like obsessed with Allison's feet. It's just weird. I don't know, man. There's so many of these different thoughts. Definitely leave your thoughts down below. Hit that like and subscribe and look out for more movie and TV reviews over here on a daily basis. And of course, until next time, stay classy.